A couple months back, I reviewed Valve's Steam Deck, which to this day I think is still the reigning champion when it comes to PC gaming devices due to its great performance to features to value ratio. Not only is it the cheapest option right now by a significant margin, but for the price, you get some of the best PC gaming performance in this handheld form factor. But there was one use case for the Steam Deck that I didn't cover its use as a personal computer. That's what the Steam Deck is. After all, it is literally a PC just inside the clamshell of a portable handheld console. So I decided to try out this little experiment. I wanted to see if it was possible to create this entire review only using the Steam Deck as a PC, meaning doing all my writing, desktop recording, and video editing on this device. I'm literally recording audio and video right now just using the Steam Deck. Let me bring up my phone here and actually show you video footage of this. So right here I've got my script on the main screen and I can zoom out and go to the secondary Steam Deck screen. You can see the Steam Deck is situated on a dock right now and Audacity is recording audio while this webcam app is recording video through the DSLR that's mounted on this monitor. So yeah, I just kind of went all in to see if this would be possible. Now to test Steam Deck's capability as a desktop PC, I needed a dock. The obvious solution would have been to go for Valve's official Steam Deck dock, but I went with an alternative option. This, ladies and gentlemen, is JSOC's USB-C 6-in-1 hard drive multifunctional adapter. The reason I went with this brand was because this dock has an extra feature that Valve's official dock does not, the ability to install an NVMe SSD. While my Steam Deck did come with 512 gigabytes of internal storage, and while I did install a one terabyte micro SD card, I wanted to reserve the internal storage to install desktop programs and my one terabyte micro SD card for PC games, emulators, ROMs, you name it, and I've already filled up this micro SD card quite a bit. So to feel comfortable using this device as a desktop PC, I needed sufficient additional storage for my needs, and so this JSOX dock came as a really great solution with an additional two terabytes of NVMe SSD storage when the Steam Deck is docked, we're looking at a setup with a grand total of 3.5 terabytes. Now, full disclosure, this video is sponsored by JSOX. They sent me this dock as a review unit to show off, but I made it very clear to them that since this is going to be a review video, I'm not going to hold back on both the pros and the cons, regardless of whether this is sponsored or not. They responded by saying, we actually like it when people give us constructive feedback. We welcome an honest, thorough review. So that's exactly what I'm going to provide. It was only after I got that assurance that I would not be restricted in my feedback of this doc that I decided to agree to this sponsorship. But regardless, the disclosure I felt was important so you can make up your own mind. With that said, the dock is honestly very functional and feels pretty premium to boot thanks to its metal chassis that's cool to the touch. That also gives it a nice, dense, and hefty feel that keeps the dock planted on any reasonable surface it's placed on. It's also got a decent selection of ports, a USB-C port that's mainly used to keep the device charged but can also be used to connect devices if the Steam Deck is running on battery, an HDMI port that allows for up to 4K 60Hz, two USB-A ports and an Ethernet port for wired internet connection to maximize your internet speeds. Overall, this dock has served me well. I'm satisfied with its quality. Now, if there's one design flaw that I would point out is that the hump in the back where the NVMe SSD slot resides does block a quadrant of the Steam Deck's vents if you center the device on the dock. This could potentially negatively impact the device's cooling capabilities and in turn its performance, so it's definitely worth pointing out. There is a simple solution to this problem though, just slide the Steam Deck towards the right side until the vents are fully freed up. This does make the setup look less symmetrical, but for those who don't care all that much about aesthetics, this will be a non-issue. Another drawback worth pointing out is that it is missing a third USB-A port that Valve's official dock has, but it's a trade-off that I'm personally willing to make for the major benefit of being able to install an NVMe SSD that the Steam Deck can be docked onto. 
And setting the dock up was pretty straightforward. It didn't take long before I was up and running with a dual monitor setup that utilized one of my 1440p displays as the primary screen and the Steam Deck itself as a secondary screen with a two USB-A ports taken up by my keyboard and mouse. Though my mouse does also have Bluetooth capability, so that's an option to free up one of the USB-A ports to plug in other accessories. Once everything was hooked up, before I moved on to the desktop experience, I did spend some time in gaming mode to see what it was like to game on a docked Steam Deck on a more sizable canvas. And while it goes without saying that demanding AAA games running at 720p and lower settings for reasonable performance will look nowhere near as good as they'll do on a full-fledged desktop, especially on a bigger screen, for its size, a docked Steam Deck is functional enough as a gaming PC for AAA games as long as you're willing to make some compromises on visual fidelity. And if you're playing older last-gen games and further back, Steam Deck will run those games damn well at higher settings and they'll look pretty good on a bigger screen even, they'll look good enough. Then there are the less demanding indie games and whatnot, and yeah, I mean, Steam Deck can handle those perfectly fine. The worth noting is that if you want to go beyond 800p or 720p resolution, you do have to boot games up in desktop mode where games will perform worse than the resolution capped gaming mode, so hopefully a future update will enable docked gaming mode to render games at higher resolutions based on the monitor that's plugged in. And for emulators that run well on the Steam Deck, they'll look and perform well on a big screen. You're obviously going to make some compromises the newer the games are, but overall, it's still an impressive feat what this machine can do as a docked desktop setup. From there, I moved on to the desktop experience, which I found to be really smooth and functional. For basic and common desktop tasks, it was easy to forget this was running on a portable handheld device. I was downloading web browsers like Chrome, media players like VLC, OBS Studio for desktop recording, Audacity for audio recording, Linux-compatible video editors like Hayden Live, so on and so forth with ease, all readily available in the Discover feature that allows you to conveniently search for and install programs, and most of them ran pretty much like they would in any other desktop experience. The one exception is Webcamoid, which does stutter here and there. It doesn't make for the smoothest face cam experience. I think you'll notice that throughout the video. And video capture in general through, say, OBS, once it starts getting hardware intensive, it can lead to stutters and video capture that isn't as smooth as it would be on a full-fledged desktop, but most common tasks work flawlessly when using the Steam Deck as a desktop PC. I was doing things like streaming videos on YouTube with no problems, with only very occasional stutters when watching 4K videos. What you're looking at now might seem a little more stuttery than it is when I'm not running OBS because I am capturing this footage here through OBS. And when trying to do too much at the same time, there would be occasions where the desktop experience would freeze momentarily and stuff like that, but nothing terribly obtrusive, nothing that makes the desktop experience unusable. One hurdle that I did have to overcome was just getting used to the Linux operating system. A lot of it does feel like a Windows desktop experience, but certain things like folder locations for specific things, finding alternative programs for ones that are not compatible with Linux, and just trying to circumvent certain issues that I know how to resolve on Windows that I don't know how to navigate with Linux, that stuff did take some getting used to, but once I got acclimated enough with the Linux desktop experience, I began my process of creating this review. Accessing Google Docs and typing up this whole review entirely on the Steam Deck was easy enough, and then after I finished filming some B-roll footage, I was immediately relieved by the comfort of being able to drop my large video files onto the 2TB NVMe SSD slotted into the JSON dock. A nice safety net of storage for this review and for future uses and purposes. And as I mentioned before, even this video and audio are all being recorded on the Steam Deck, Bring up my phone again, you can see right here that the Steam Deck secondary display is being used to house Audacity and this webcam app while I use the primary screen for the script. Now, in order to record both face cam footage and audio using the Steam Deck, I needed to free up both of the USB-A ports in the back, and fortunately, I happen to have this handy-dandy portable Bluetooth keyboard that I could use alongside my Bluetooth-enabled mouse to free up both of those USB-A ports, where I plugged in my Focusrite Solo and my Elgato Cam Link. The former hooked up to this headset, and the latter hooked up to the DSLR camera. Once I had all the necessary face cam footage and audio recording, I imported them all into a session of Kaden Live and began the editing process. I did try to use OBS Studio to record some video editing B-roll, but the Steam Deck simply couldn't handle both recording desktop footage and video editing simultaneously no matter what encoder I used. Either an encoder would produce footage that was too choppy or recording would just stop moments after I began editing again 
So instead I decided to record my editing process using my smartphone camera and making this video through Linux, through the Steam Deck, through JSOC's dock has been interesting to say the least. After overcoming challenges like becoming acclimated to a different editing program from my go-to Adobe Premiere Pro, before long I did eventually get into a flow and I was editing pretty speedily, albeit with some stuttery performance during playback. As long as you aren't doing anything too sophisticated with effects and whatnot, I found that it is entirely possible to use the Steam Deck as a PC in combination with docs like JSOX to edit and render simpler videos. I mean the video you're watching right now is living proof of that all of this was pretty much made just using the Steam Deck. Now, just because something is possible doesn't necessarily mean it's ideal. In no way, shape, or form would I recommend you use this setup as a replacement for an editing workstation or a good enough alternative for on-the-go video editing. You definitely don't want to do professional video editing work on the Steam Deck. I had to often keep my playback resolution at 360p for adequate playback performance, occasionally peaking at higher resolutions to gauge finer details of footage, and even then stutter slowdowns and occasional seconds-long freezes were frequent enough to disrupt editing workflow. And there were a few occasions where freezes resulted in Caden Live crashing altogether, and this happened enough times to make me anxious during my editing process. Fortunately, this software does a good job at recovering projects, so I never lost any substantial amount of work. But nonetheless, when you're pouring so much time and effort into editing a video, you don't want an environment where you feel like it could crash in an inopportune moment. It's also worth considering that rendering and publishing this video took about an hour and 20 minutes, and this is a 15 minute video we're talking about. On my main desktop, this video would literally take a couple minutes to render and publish. So if you make a mistake and have to re-render the video, it could cost you quite a bit of time. Which makes this setup not particularly ideal when you're working under time constraints, when you're working professionally. You really have to treat this setup as a workable backup that's more of a plan C. There is only so far you can push this little device before you start to feel like it's chewing on more than it can swallow. And, I mean, none of this should come as a surprise. The Steam Deck wasn't made for video editing. I was just really curious to test this out and show you guys my experiments results. Then again, I have to give this docked setup credit. The fact that a computing device this small was still powerful enough to hold its own when editing and rendering both 1080p and 4K footage during the process of creating this not insubstantial video right here that you're watching is still kind of insane to think about but I'd only use a docked Steam Deck as an editing device in an emergency. I'd never tell people that a Steam Deck can serve as a daily driver for this kind of work, especially on a professional capacity, unless their videos are on the simpler and more basic side. It can, however, genuinely serve as a competent desktop experience that is perfectly capable of handling most common tasks, including gaming within reason, all while being extremely portable. Combined with a JSOX docks NVMe SSD slot, when you return turn home or go to work and dock your Steam Deck, alongside all the additional ports you have access to, you'll also have plenty of storage for games, media, programs, files, whatever your heart desires. And it opens the door to compelling possibilities like, say, being able to install Windows separately on the SSD. Now, I myself didn't try dual booting Windows with this Steam Deck JSOX dock setup. Steam Deck currently lacks official support for Windows dual booting, and with Windows still not working quite perfectly on this device, the current effort required to accomplish this just doesn't feel worthwhile or like the cost outweighs the benefits. But for the more tech-savvy folks who want to experiment with this kind of stuff, a dock with extra storage could certainly pave the road for some interesting use cases. With all said and done, I'm really impressed by Steam Deck's capabilities as a desktop device. It won't place or workstation, but for its size, it's still more capable than it has any right to be. I'm also genuinely pleased by what JSOX dock brings to the table with upgradable NVMe SSD storage alongside all of the conveniences that come with a nice dock that makes it ideal for those who may be considering using the Steam Deck as a home computer, or even as a media device that you can hook up to your TV and do everything from streaming movies and shows to playing games, you name it. Just remember that the Steam Deck, despite how impressive it is, does have its limitations. It does pull off some crazy magic, but it certainly doesn't accomplish outright miracles, you know? It does go really well with JSOC stock, though, and I love the idea of this dock with an NVMe SSD slot. It just uh, makes the desktop experience feel that much more just comfortable and convenient and legit if that makes sense. But yeah, there you have it, folks. This has been my experience using the Steam Deck as a desktop PC through JSOX Dock. 
and this has been what it's like for me to create this video just using the Steam Deck. What a time to be alive to be able to witness technology reach such heights. But anyway, to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.